Former Miami Dolphins head coach Brian Flores is suing the NFL and three teams alleging in part that he faced racial discrimination during the hiring and interview process in the NFL. Flores says he participated in, quote, sham interviews with both the New York Giants and the Denver Broncos, and that during his interview with the Broncos, it was clear he wasn't taken seriously. Though all three teams have vehemently denied the accusations, Flores gave his side of the story on CNN yesterday. As you know, there was a, a series of text messages that led me to believe that um, I was going on an interview uh, for a job that uh, was already handed uh, to someone else. And look, uh, I'm all for um, you know, hiring the, the, the person you want to hire. Uh, I, I understand that. Um, it was humiliating. Um, to be quite honest, uh, there was disbelief, there was anger, there was, um, you know, a, a wave of emotions. According to The Ringer, there's currently one black head coach in the NFL and 24 white coaches, whereas over half of NFL players identify as black and only 25% identify as white. A rising panel joins us now to weigh in. Will Jawando is a council member at large in Montgomery County, Maryland, and a Democratic strategist. Pamela Denise Long is a contributor at Newsweek and a business consultant. Glad to have you both with us. Thank you. Good Thank to be here. You. Yeah, same here. Good morning. So, so Will, you know, this this seems pretty bad to me. Uh, you know that they were they were just kind of using him for appearances, and I, I think he has a, a pretty good case that that's what this was. What do you think? Absolutely, I think if you ask. Uh, black professionals, women, other people who have been historically discriminated against, have they felt this was happening in other contexts across multiple uh, industries? They would say absolutely yes. It's kind of like a, it's not a secret that this happens. Um, I think the only difference here is that he has evidence, right? Strong enough to file a lawsuit. And, and, and I think he's going to get more uh, as that's why they made it a class action and other people will come out and share their stories. Um, you know, it's uh, not to mention, you know, he was asked to tank games. We can talk about that in a mm -hmm. second. But, you know, the the uh, the disdain and the, you know, just lack of dignity uh, when you walk into a room and you know, uh, and he knew in this instance, sometimes many of us have suspected that we're just being interviewed uh, as just as a token and kind of just to check the box, as he said. Uh, but he knew going in, he had evidence going in from his former coach that he worked for from 10 years and Bill Belichick that who messed up and sent him the wrong text message, text message saying they hired the other guy. He knew going in. And so imagine having to sit through that. Uh, it's it's unfortunate, but I'm glad he's stepped up and is shining a light on it. Uh, it shows that the Rooney rule, uh, well intentioned as it might be, is not enough, is not working. Uh, and they need to have reform in the way they uh, bring people on. You said one one black head, head head coach in a league that's depending on the year anywhere between 50 and 60 percent black players. It's just not acceptable. Yeah, Denise, and to, to be clear to viewers who haven't been following this close enough, Will's exactly right. He, he got a text message from, from Bill Belichick who said, you know, basically congratulations on getting the job. And he's like, yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm, I'm interviewing on Thursday. I can't wait. I'm really pumped. I think I'm a real candidate. He's like, yeah, yeah, you've, you've got it. And then he's like, wait a minute, do you, do you know you're talking to Flores? And Belichick's like, oh, no. Right. Sorry, <laughs> no. Ooh. Oops. So yeah. this is before the interview had, had happened. And, and so like Will was saying, this was proof of something that is so, is so often suspected by particularly black candidates, but also you know, candidates of color, that they are being brought in because a corporation you know, has some type of policy that you must interview at least one or at least two minority candidates before you make your decision. Uh, right. And so in, in your experience, and I've heard, of, uh, I've heard people complain, I obviously have never been Rooney ruled, but I have heard people complain that they have, that they've been Rooney ruled and they've, and they've suspected it and, and known it really because their particular qualifications are so far afield from this particular job that it's just absurd mm. that they're even being brought in for any other reason than to, to check a box. Denise, is, is this something that, that uh, you or people you know have, have, have experienced? Have you ever had somebody that could straight up prove it like that? Yeah, so I think this bit of evidence that he received is just unique and especially damning, right? So uh, part of what you're saying strikes me as uh, 
people needing to fill diversity positions. And there are several things that happen. One, they don't advertise in places where qualified diversity candidates will uh, respond and see the uh, recruitment effort in the first place. I've heard of people advertising for jobs in, you know, DC, for example, but they put the ad out in South Dakota and that kind of nonsense where a person who could fill the job in a particular locale would never see it in the first place. Um, I have heard of what you said where people are brought in and it's kind of like you you already know I'm not qualified for for the position, but you get to check the box that you are compliant with your diversity, equity, inclusion efforts, as well as, right, any potential lawsuits that may have required you to interview diverse candidates in the first place. So what this really calls to mind is the extent to which leaders in an organization are willing to subvert and avoid doing the right thing in the first place, right? So part of what, you know, Jackson and Flores said, and Flores in particular, was that he wants to see changes in the hearts and minds of the people who are leading, and I would suggest is even more than changing the hearts and minds. We really need robust oversight uh, of people who are making these decisions in the first place. Yeah. You know, Will, this is a moment in time where the Supreme Court, for instance, is, is likely to reconsider, and I, I think strictly limit, um, race-based admissions in colleges. Obviously, uh, President Biden has committed to picking a very specific Supreme Court nominee, a, a black female. So we're, we're talking a lot about, about diversity and representation. Uh, I, this is sort of a case, I think, where you can see how surface level commitments to diversity and uh, or, or, you know, thin commitments, stated commitments that are insincere to diversity and, and representation can be, can, can be a cover for not actually taking these things seriously at all. So, so even if you know, even if you pledge to, to be more diverse, pledge to, to give opportunities to people of color, to women, et cetera, that doesn't mean you're actually going to do that. There are ways to make it appear like you're doing that without actually doing that. Absolutely, and I'm glad you brought up that case. I was going to <clears throat> do it as well. We're at this moment where you have kind of two sides of the story. You have, you know, the president of the United States saying, look, there's never been a black woman on the Supreme Court. There's so many qualified that have and have been and are jurists. I'm going to appoint one because that's important. The court should reflect the diversity of the country. And, and this is in a moment I, and I'm going to pick from this widely uh, qualified pool uh, to, to my colleague's point. There are many, 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 many people who could be qualified to be a Supreme Court justice and many, many black women. Um, and then you have this, the case before that court that's going to, like you said, I think, unfortunately, s severely limit the use of race-based admissions as a point, as a part of the analysis, right? Not the whole analysis. And and then you have a discussion in the broader culture about, uh, you know, the governor of Virginia setting up a hotline for people who are reading books about race in, in school, which is, we're in a, we're in a crazy time. And, and then you have mm. this instance, this case, where it's so clear, and I think it will be proven to be clear, despite the NFL's blanket denial of all allegations. I don't know how you can deny all allegations before you do an investigation, by the way, but, but they've done that within you know 48 hours. And it shows you where we are. I mean, this veneer of, uh, of caring about diversity and inclusion, but are you really caring about it? Are you changing the systems and structures? You know, in the federal government, and in the in county government where I work, uh, we've set up systems to try to minimize it. It's not perfect, but you have to have panels of people. There's scoring systems. There's these whole things that are try, try to set up to minimize discrimination in the process. It's not perfect. It still seeps through because people run the process. But I think this is just an example of how deep-seated it is. Uh, and we have, to, uh, we have to do better if we really care about it. And you're right, a lot of people, I think, are just kind of going through the motions because they know it's the right thing to do and advertisers like it, but they don't really care and have a commitment to it in, in deep, deep inside. And that's why we need better systems and structures and accountability. And let, let's talk about some of Flores' other allegations. I don't know if uh, anybody here has watched Ballers, I assume so, it's a great, great show. Some of this stuff seemed like it was just ripped out of a script from, from Ballers. Yeah. I mean, first of all, you've got, as, as Will referenced, being offered $100,000 per loss uh, to tank games so that he would improve the draft record, and then being 
uh, you know, uh, called to account for actually winning. Like that, like that was his. That was the thing he had done wrong was to win. But then the the straight ballers script move was uh, he was encouraged to try to poach a, a high level uh, or a, a high profile quarterback. Uh, mm -hmm. Said that you know this this violates some of NFL rules, so I'm not doing this. He gets invited over to a, a yacht where he's then ambushed by, hey, the quarterback is here. Like just straight out of a, a scene from, <laughs> from that HBO show. Uh, he storms off the yacht. Uh, just right. you know, one more element of the disrespect that he's shown throughout throughout his his career. Uh, Den Denise, what, what did you make either of of the one hundred thousand dollars or that quarterback play? And sh shouldn't a coach who is losing on purpose kind of be banned from the league? I mean, that's the Pete Rose. If, you know, that's that's kind of the the Pete Rose standard. Yeah, well, I think part of it is it, it shines a light on the stuff that happens under the table, right, but out loud and people don't tell, which is why uh, people who are courageous enough, right, to be whistleblowers is so important. Uh, they incentivized, it sounded like, both for Jackson, as I could discern from his uh, interview, is that he wasn't necessarily told to lose, but he was incentivized for losing, right? So it's more proof in the ways that which people get incentives and punishments for what they do and that works. Those incentives and those punishment works, even if it's under the table. You know, I, I think that uh, what these guys have done is incredibly courageous. And here's the other piece of this that shines a light on it for me, is you know that this is happening with other people. And the reason these leaders are able to get away with it is because it works. And it becomes very clear to anyone who's paying attention that if you don't play ball the way we intend for you to do it, you will be blacklisted. Uh, you will not get hired. We will find a reason to underrate your performance, though we're justified in terminating you or otherwise not offering you a contract. This happens all over the place, and others have said it, and these two guys have said it as well, Jackson and Flores, is that this is bigger than the NFL. This happens in corporate America all the time. It happens in education all the time. Play game our way or get out of the way because we can always find someone to replace you. Yeah. Will, Will do, you, do you think this is going to change people's minds about or, or maybe open their eyes to, to how these, these things work in the NFL and other places since it is such a really, I, th I think, a appallingly clear case? I, I, I think everybody's going to be like, really? This is, you know, this is awful. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I, I mentioned this earlier, though. It's... I'm not sure. I mean, the NFL vehemently denied, all three teams vehemently denied in the face of this evidence. And if you watch Brian Flores, and I knew him, you know, as a player, he's a very serious guy, you know, as detailed as what he's saying has happened, you know, in, in both the, the there's going to be other people that know the, the text messages from Belichick will be there. You know who else? Bill Belichick probably text message to the guy who got the job prior to the interview. Um, someone else knows so that the, the, there has to be in discovery. The, this is going to come to light. So you, I hope that it will shine a light on this problem. Uh, and show how pervasive it is. You know, I, I you know, I can't, I can't think about, uh, I was thinking about the London B. Johnson, Linda B. Johnson in the 64 Civil Rights Act. And he says, you know, he says something, I'm paraphrasing, you can't bring a p chain of people for hundreds of years and then bring them to the mm -hmm. finish, the starting line of a race and say, go ahead and compete. And, you know, that was, you know, you know, 56 years ago. Uh, and that is where we are today. Uh, we are fighting just to be able to compete at the same level using qualifications after overcoming much. That's not that long ago. And I think people like, we want to move on, trust me. Those of us who are people of color would love to have everything be equal and fair. We know it's not. And I hope that this will shine a light for many people to show that this is just a clear cut case of what's happening every day. Uh, and this is a guy who was an NFL player, had two winning seasons, was a great coach, was loved by his players. They wanted to play and win for him. And this is how he was treated. He was shunned out. And why does Bill Belichick know before Flores knows? That means it's it's an inside game. People know. Yes. And Belichick actually cares for Flores in some way, I'm sure, because he worked for him for 10 years. That's the other thing about this is that people know what's going on. And those of us who are applying for these positions don't and are left out. And I hope that's apparent to people and it shows how pervasive it is. Yeah, and that's one of the most poignant things about this, that it's clear that this is happening every single day all over the country. And in one context or another, in, 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 in exclusive rooms, you know, from coast to coast.
Yeah. Absolutely. One thing I'd like to add to that, if I may, is this also calls into question who is qualified to determine the qualifications of who is hired, who is qualified to determine these diversity, equity and inclusion initiatives and what they will look like. So we have to make sure that when we think about DEIA, diversity, equity, inclusion and anti-racism, we're not just talking about quotas because we do know you have to have, you know, diverse people present. So quotas implied, but we also need to talk about the qualifications for leadership, let alone the qualifications for the people that they hire. Oh. Yep. oh, and just to stand up before we leave for Pete Rose for one second, he actually never bet against his team. Right. Uh, <laughs> he only right. bet for his team, and he got right. banned for it. Right. Will and wow. Denise, though, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank, thank you. you. And we'll have more Rising right after this.